in this series, we'll be making a horror game from the ground up and teaching you everything along the way. From researching, theorizing, and prototyping, to main menus, UI, and sound. Join me and follow along to become the master game developer you want to be. Hello everybody and welcome back to creating a horror game from scratch. Today we are going to take a break from evidence, at least at first, by adding in the motion sensors to the doors, which will be as simple as if these, uh, if the ghost is in the zone outside of the door, then it will turn on a motion sensor, which I think maybe we might get rid of these two doors here. We'll see, we'll see how it ends up working. Uh, and if that goes by quick, then instead what we'll do is also add in the scream evidence. Let's begin. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go from lit to unlit so I can see what I'm doing here. Then I'm gonna press control space. We're gonna head over to the content folder and we're gonna move over to the starter content. Within the starter content, we are looking for props. And here are our meshes with the materials already applied. Now we might end up changing what mesh we're using, but for now we're gonna go ahead and grab this SM lamp wall. And I'm gonna drag mine into the scene. You don't really need to. This is just so I can get a good look at it here. What we're gonna do is we are going to take a point light and we're gonna shove it on the top of this thing and turn it on if the ghost is in this quadrant. So let's begin. Let's go ahead and hit control space. We're gonna move on over to uh, our blueprints folder and it'll just be an actor. We're gonna right click within this folder and we are going to create a blueprint class. It'll be an actor. And we're just gonna name this motion detector underscore BP for blueprint. And we'll open that up. With this blueprint open, now we'll go up to the top left and we need to add a couple of things. The first thing we're going to add is the static mesh. So we'll click on static mesh. We will name this wall light underscore SM for static mesh. And over on the right, we will go ahead and uh, we will select the static mesh, which I believe was called wall, or uh, no, there it is. It's SM underscore lamp underscore wall. We'll select that, put that into the blueprint. Then we will go back up to the top left here Go ahead and click on the default scene route so that way the light doesn't become a child of the static mesh. Click on add and we're gonna add a point light. For now, we're not gonna change the point light settings. We're just gonna let them be what they are. We'll just drag it up though. I'm gonna drag mine up about 30 on the Z axis here, which is blue. And then something you're gonna see uh, that happens we might change and it has to do with the static mesh casting a shadow. Uh, it creates a very harsh shadow, and uh, we'll see if we can play with the settings to make it not cast one, but for now, we're gonna leave it. Go ahead and compile and save this, and surprisingly enough, ah, and you know what, Never mind. I was about to say we're finished, but we're not. Let's head on over to the event graph. We're gonna delete all this, and we are going to right click. We are gonna create a custom event, and we're gonna call this turn on. Now, you guys have been following the tutorial pretty closely, so we're gonna do a small exercise. I'm gonna give you just a brief moment. What do you think we need to do when we call the turn on function? Obviously, we're gonna turn on the light, but what do we need to do? Ask yourself this, work through it in your head. The reason I'm making you do this is because it's a very important skill to develop. If you said, we're gonna take out the point light and we're going to set its visibility. Good job. If you didn't, that's perfectly okay. It just means that you haven't done this enough yet and that's perfectly okay. So what we're gonna do is if we turn it on, we're gonna set the new visibility to true. Then we're gonna right click, create custom event and we're gonna do turn off again. We're basically gonna do the exact same thing. So we're just gonna grab both these two, we'll copy and paste, and we will set the visibility to false instead. 
And now we need a Boolean. Do we know why I need a Boolean? Again, just a brief moment. Do you know why we need a Boolean? We need to know if the light is on or off. Also, leave a comment. Do you enjoy me giving you a moment to try this? If you do, I'll keep doing it. If you don't, let me know and I will stop. But it's a good skill and it exercises your brain. Okay, so with turn on, obviously we want to set this to true and with turn off, we want to set it to false. Uh, we'll go ahead and comment these out. So we'll just say when function is called, it will set the visibility of the point light to true or false respectively. Also set the Boolean to true or false as well. There we go. I've been working on getting my commenting a lot better. Um, even even like this is what I do for myself at this point. Believe it or not, this is way more important and useful than you might think. All right. So as of right now, we can turn it on and we can turn it off. And that's really all we need to do. So we're going to compile and save that. And now, believe it or not, we're actually going to make the, um, the thing that controls the light uh, the quadrant. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select a quadrant here. And... Oh, that's the light BP. Wait a minute. We need the quadrant. There we go. We're going to go ahead and we're going to select a quadrant and we're going to go ahead and edit the quadrant BP. Uh, if you don't know how I just did that, basically all I did was I clicked it here and then it highlighted it up here in the outliner. And then from there, I clicked on the edit quadrant BP. So what we're going to do here is we first need to make a variable. Do you know what the variable is? This one's a little bit more complicated, but we have done it before. It is something we've done. A reminder, we're trying to tell the light to turn on or off. What we need to do is we need to create a variable and we need to call it motion detector. And what we're gonna do is we are going to change the type to motion uh, detector BP as an object reference. We're gonna make it public by opening the eyeball next to the type. We're gonna compile and save. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to create a um, overlap event with this box. So we're gonna right click on the box and we're gonna hit add event and we're gonna hit on component begin overlap. So what that's going to do is it's going to say, is something in the quadrant? Because if it's in the box or overlapping the box, then it's in the quadrant. So in this case, the other actor is going to be, can you guess? The ghost. Uh, but specifically, we can just do a uh, parent ghost because we don't care what type of ghost. We just care that is it is a ghost in general. And this, by the way, is the first time you're seeing why it's so important to have a parent ghost regardless of how many types we're inevitably going to have. By having the parent ghost, we can check to see if it's a ghost because we don't care what type it is. If this, if we didn't make a parent, we would have to make a check for every single one of the types of ghosts that we have, which is just way too much work. So we'll just check for the parent ghost instead. So are you a parent ghost? As in, are you a ghost at all? If yes, then it'll go out this top pin. If no, it'll go out the bottom pin. But guess what? We're, we don't care if it fails. So if a ghost enters the box, then we're gonna get our motion detector. And do you know what we're gonna do next? Dude, I feel, you know what? It's starting to feel like an episode of Dora the Explorer, but honestly, they do it in that show as well. It gets your brain working. Do you know what we're gonna do out of motion detector? I'll give you a moment. It's as simple as calling the function we made. Pull this out and look, there it is. Turn on, plug this in and bam. If a ghost enters the quadrant, turn on the light. So now we're gonna do the same thing, but the opposite. 
We're gonna right click on box again. We're gonna add event, but this time we're gonna do on component end overlap. We are going to again cast a parent ghost with the other actor. So whenever the ghost exits the box, instead what we're gonna do is we're going to pull out of motion detector and turn off. Simple as that. Let's go ahead and grab this. We'll comment it and we'll say if a ghost of any type, actually let's do this. If a ghost comma of any type, comma, enters the quadrant, it will call the turn on or off functions in the motion detector BP. It's as simple as that, guys. Ba -ba. We will compile and save. And now, for each quadrant, we need to set up a motion detector that it can turn on and off. So, for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and head back to our actors folder here. And we're going to pull out motion detector BP. As you can see, it's facing the incorrect direction. So we're gonna turn it so it's facing perfectly flush with the wall here like that. Make sure it's nice and in position. Ah, so if you don't know why this happens, like see how this is moving way too big? Well, it's up here at the top right. Uh, we have the snap to 10. If you take the snap and move it to like five, you can see if that'll work. Boom, for us, it did work. Or if you really need precision, you can set it to one. I suggest stick on around five to 10, but if you really need precision, go to one. Uh, but just so you know, that's where the snapping is happening. Same with your angles and your scaling. All right, so we have one light here. And now what we're gonna do, and I'll just tell you instead of waiting this time, because it's been a while since we've done it, we're gonna click on the quadrant BP and over on the right hand side, as you can see, because we made it public, we have the motion detector variable over here in our details panel. And if we click this eyedropper tool, we can go straight over here to the quadrant and click on it and we can hit um, nothing. It's done. It now knows to contact this motion detector right here. Now, there are there is a argument to be had that you can just make two BPs and actually make the motion detector a part of the quadrant. So therefore, when you place a quadrant, the motion detector comes with it, but it's not quite as modular. It's not quite as flexible as just having two separate BPs. However, it does save time and it's a bit more efficient to have it all in one BP, just so you know. Kind of irrelevant here, but I thought it was something important to know. Now, I'm probably gonna speed this up. I'm gonna go ahead and add a light for the rest of the quadrants. Uh, feel free to join me. And there we go. Now, when I save this and I make it go back to the lit mode, you're gonna notice something. Oh, they're all turned on. And if you notice, one, they're not very bright. And two, I'm gonna go ahead and press P on my keyboard to hide the AI uh, grid. Uh, they're not really shining down or illuminating the room at all. Now, to be fair, these are not the room lights. They're not supposed to illuminate the entire room but they're still pretty bad. So we're gonna do a couple things. The first thing we're gonna do is a simple fix that we might change later. We're gonna click on the light BP, there the motion detector BP. We're gonna edit it. And a simple solution right now, we're gonna click on the wall light SM up here at the top left. And on the right hand side at the top in the search, we're gonna type in shadow. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn off cast shadow. What this is gonna do is make it so the static mesh isn't eating all of the light. Now there's ways to get around that to keep it because it does look nice whenever it's set up correctly. But for now, we are going to just leave it as is. 
And look at that. Look at the difference already. So, yeah. The next thing we're going to have to do, if you notice, they're all turned on by default. So what we need to do is make it so they're not all turned on by default. Simple, go, simply go into the motion detector BP, click on point light, and on the right hand side under rendering, you'll have a visible checkbox. Just uncheck that, hit compile and save, and you'll see that they're all turned off. So let's go ahead and hit play and see if the ghost enters these quadrants and when it does, if the lights turn on and off. And there you go. The motion detector has been turned on for the front right quadrant there, and it should turn off, and this right one should turn on whenever it switches quadrants. There you go. Isn't that so cool? And what we could do is add like a really light alarm or something to make the, per the player feel like it's very pertinent information that this is turned on. But yeah, hell yeah. As you guys know, these videos have been coming a bit slower than they were at first. This is due to the fact that, I mean, I've just, I've got to do work elsewhere because unfortunately I don't get paid to do this, even though I love to do it and I'm going to keep doing it. Um, I just have a lot going on in life. However, I think I'm going to start doing shorter episodes like this and it will let me be able to get more out. So a little bit shorter, but you should see new episodes very soon. Thank you so much for watching. I have a Patreon down below and, uh, and maybe it can actually help me work on these and do even better videos if I can start getting a living off of making these. I appreciate all the support, guys. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.